Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of TC Talk, back today with another video, and in today's video, I'm going to be going over what makes Alpha Clash different from other trading card games. I wanted to make a video on this, kind of give you really set ideas on why I think it's different and why they have built upon a couple good principles that other card games have had, and then just, you know, made it better, to be quite honest. So, we'll get right into it. If you like this type of content, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, definitely check out... Uh, some of the other videos I've made on Alpha Clash as, long, as well as Flesh and Blood. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for stopping by. If you are a long-standing supporter, I really appreciate y'all as well. Um, feel free to check out the Patreon and the Discord down below. So I have five general points over here because I wanted to make this video and I wanted to just kind of have a discussion. If you're new to my channel, I don't edit a lot. I do very like discussional-based content, and I like to discuss it this way because to me, I get the point across more clearer. I don't like edited stuff. I think it, it puts out some of the like the meat and potatoes of what people are talking about sometimes. And I really want to, you know, be efficient with this. So I have five reasons here. One of the biggest drawbacks I've seen so far, at least on my channel, of why people don't like Alpha Clash, not that don't like, aren't gonna play Alpha Clash, other than like they just don't have the time or the money, which is a completely acceptable reason. One of the more like mechanical reasons is they think that it plays too much like magic or it plays too much like another game or it's very similar to even flesh and blood right it doesn't have any differences and they don't want to invest money in a game that is diff that isn't different and this game is extremely different uh than those games and it does have some similarities what they basically did is they took the best parts of all these different tcgs and they made them different. So I'm, I'm going to go over five things of why it is different. And hopefully it'll help you give a little more clear idea. I have some, I'll, I'll show some cards here when I'm explaining some stuff. But really, I just want this to be a discussion based thing. I don't want it to be too crazy. So the first thing is, and this is a very deep mechanical thing. This game is an action card, action based game, not a stack based game. So Flesh and Blood is a stack based game. Magic is a stacked base game. When you play a card, it creates a stack on the field, right? Um, and then you can play cards. It's almost like a sandwich. You play cards on top of that stack, and then things are resolved from top to bottom. And it goes on a stack, but really there's no more actions being played. It's more of like, you know, everything is within that, that stack. And you respond to a stack being started. You don't respond necessarily to everything, or you can't respond to everything, but because it's a stack-based game, sometimes you can respond to your... And on stack-based games, you can respond to yourself, right? You can play something that's a counter, and then at instant speed on top of that, play this, and then the instant speed resolves, then that resolves, and things of that nature. This game is an action-based game. When you play an action, your opponent can play an action and respond if it's applicable and it makes sense. They have a counterplay action. Maybe you're attacking, and they have a counterattack action. You know, if we go into the card list... And we just look at any 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 deck. Um, you'll see cards that have keywords like trigger enter. So that's an action. Uh, if a counterplay action. So if your opponent plays something, plays a card, you can then respond to that action. That action did not create a stack. They're just it's in standby, and, and unless you have a counterplay action, it moves on. If you were to play this counterplay action. Then unless they have something to counterplay your counterplay, they can't just add something on a stack. There's no instant speed stuff. There's no crazy stuff like that. There are quick actions you can play, but really it's like I respond to your action, then you can respond to my action and things of that nature, right? So things go in standby. It works the same way as stack in terms of priority for the most part. The big difference about this game is you don't always pass priority to your opponent. Sometimes, like with clash buffs, if you pass your clash buff phase which is like your rea attack reaction step in fl for Flesh and Blood players. It's like the attack reaction step. So in Flesh and Blood, because most people that, that watch me are Flesh and Blood based, when you attack, you have the attack reactions, defense reactions, so on and so forth. But the thing is, if I pass attack reaction in Flesh and Blood and you defense react, I can then respond with an attack reaction because I get priority passed back to me to respond to your action on the stack. This game doesn't work that way. If I play an attack, you the, your opponent gets a chance to trap to play a trap card, play a quick action card, or play an obstruction like a block, declare a block. Then you, as the offensive player, get to do a clash buff, and then they get to do a clash buff. It's very action-based. There's a lot more semantics to that, but the main thing you need to know when it comes to action-based game versus stack-based game is a lot simpler, and not in a bad way. There's depth of play in this game, but it's a little bit 
simpler in terms of knowing when you have priority to do something when you don't. If your opponent doesn't say counter play or counter attack or counter trap or something like that, like there's a counter to it, you can't play it during that window, right? You can't play a counter play card when someone attacks. It has to be when they play the card, right? Um, there's very simple rules. Counter attack. Here it is again. So this one's a counter attack card. You can't play surprise when someone plays a a card. They have to attack with that card. There's different. There's very obvious windows of priority, and it creates a simpler and more accessible gameplay loop for for players, while also creating a depth of play um, for highly competitive players. And it's really nice. So that's number one. Number two is clash cards otherwise known as Creatures of Magic, right? This game has a standing board state just like Magic does. Uh, the difference is everything you have doesn't have summoning sickness unless otherwise stated. So there's a there's a keyword in this game called Observant, which means that you can, uh, like this one right here, Alpha Aster, means that you cannot attack with this card the turn it enters play. But unless it explicitly says that, every card can attack the turn it comes in. Um Cards also have recoil, which means if I attack with Alpha Aster and it's tapped for my opponent's turn, if they had normally a magic, if they were to attack this card, a 9 9, which is super powerful, as long as they have the attack to kill it, it'll get killed, but it will not attack back because it is engaged or tapped. In this game, there's recoil. There's a there's a mechanic where if I attack with this 9-9 and it's rested on your turn and you attack it, it's still going to deal non-damage to whatever you're attacking with. So there's a certain train of thought and level of play you have to think about that you don't have to think about magic. And it makes like your heavier cards, while if they get removed, it's really, really impactful for you in a negative way. If they can stay on the field, you can, you can attack... Uh, with them and then also know that they can possibly defend themselves um, similar to like a fighting game uh, on the crack back. The difference is you can't defend with engaged cards. So if I have a nine, nine, if I have a alpha aster and a Rizlek on the field, very high offensive power, I can do a 14 damage to my opponent. And then when it, or try to, and then when it comes to my turn, their turn, they can attack these cards, but if they can't kill it, they can just swing at you. So, yeah, yes, these cards can defend themselves, but they also can't block. So your opponent can just hit your contender and deal damage to you directly. So there's a different level of of uh, play and sequencing in this game, unlike Magic, unlike Flesh and Blood for sure, um, that people need to keep in mind. The next one is Clash Grounds. Um, Clash Grounds are similar to Pokemon uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh! with stadium cards and things of that nature, where... Um, they create effects on the field that either affect you or can affect you and your opponent. So similar to stadiums in, well, stadiums in, in Pokemon, I'm pretty sure only affect your side of the field. I'm pretty sure. Whereas Yu-Gi-Oh affects the whole field. If I'm correct on that, regardless, um, these affect the, the whole, the whole board. So if I play United Nation at headquarters, it says alpha hunter clash cards, get two O and interception. Attach of weapons you control or reduce by one resource. This also helps my opponent if they're alpha hunter. So it's something to keep in mind when you're playing this. So it's similar to Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh. The difference is splashing colors and the synergies in this game give a lot more player agency to how you use Clash Grounds. All five colors can blend with each other. In Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, there's some decks that just don't work together, right? But the fact that you can splash colors in this game, similar to like a Magic combined with the stadium mechanic or the clash ground mechanic allows for more player agency and it helps it's the likelihood of helping your deck higher but also being able to tech against your opponent better so that's another reason that's a little bit different so that's the third reason fourth reason is like dragon ball z the resource system right a lot of people will compare it to dragon ball z where you lay one of your cards down as a resource it provides player choice um, however, the ramp mechanics allow for more choice and decision making, in my opinion, than even Dragon Ball Z. Dragon Ball Z, you can, I think you can splash stuff, but really it's like, it's more focused on like certain synergies. Whereas this game, like you can really, you know, again, with the splash mechanic, the splash mechanic is a little bit more prevalent in this game than it is in other games that can splash colors. And because of that, it allows for a little bit more diversity in what you pitch and why you pitch it. Um, And I think it just creates a little bit more depth of play. So that's definitely a difference. And the final one is damage. Uh, Like I talked about in uh, an earlier point, 
Cards that are rested that are attacked can deal damage to you when you attack them on your offensive turn. If someone attacks you with a Moxie Prime to Clash for 3-3, if you attack it on their turn, on your turn, it's still going to deal 3 damage to whatever is attacking it. So that's something to keep in mind. The second layer to that is similar to Hearthstone. In Hearthstone, uh, all of your cards will heal at the end of turn. And in Magic, all your cards heal at the end of turn. However, in this game, each clash is its own thing. So if you want to attack, with, let's say you have a Rizlac on the field and a Moxie Prime to clash. You can't attack with both of them at once. What you'll do is you'll attack with Rizlac first. They'll do blocks, clash buffs, etc. Then you'll attack with Moxie Prime to clash. After every clash, health resets. So if I'm playing in a black versus black mirror and I attack, um, if I have a Moxie Prime to clash and I attack a, I don't know, Let's just say something that has more health than Moxie Prime to Clash. Or even even um, a Moxie Prime to Clash into an Alpha Aster. Let's say I have a... Yeah, that's a good example. Let's say I have a Rizlac on the field and a, and a Moxie Prime to Clash. They can deal eight damage together. Um, and let's say Moxie Prime to Clash has maybe a weapon on it, so it's coming in for 4-4. Four, four. Let's just say it's it has like a, a um, one of Moxie's sidearms, so it comes in for 4-4. Four, four. So this would deal four damage, this would deal five, which in theory, in like Magic or Hearthstone, would kill the Alpha Aster if it was engaged, right? Because you would deal five damage to it with Rizlac, it would kill Rizlac, but you'd deal five damage to it. Then you would deal four damage to it with Moxie, and it would kill it. Well, in this game, it resets after every single clash. So if you fire Rizlac at Alpha Aster for five, it's going to deal four damage to it, kill the Rizlac, but then it's, its health's going to reset before you can attack with the Moxie Prime to Clash. Now, at first glance, that sounds super annoying, and I get it. But there's ways to deal non-Clash damage in this game, like outside of the Clashes, like basically like burn damage. And those don't reset, right? So if you can burn Alpha Aster for four through a different effect, and then you attack it with Rizlac, it'll kill it. So there's different ways. It, it, it makes a deeper layer of, consist of uh, play for sequencing and for how you attack your opponent but also like knowing when to swing out and like have all your stuff engaged and when not to is very important there's times you're gonna have to sit back a little bit more be a little bit more patient than you would be in like a magic or a hearthstone and just kind of go from there so that's another thought as well um but those are the five reasons right so in total five reasons are it's an action-based game not a stack-based game clash cards don't have summoning sickness unless they're otherwise stated Clash Grounds or stadiums like in Pokemon can affect both opponents a little bit more impactfully and the splash of colors allows for more diversity in play. Dragon Ball Z type resource system, but also has a ramp mechanic and a splash mechanic that creates a little bit more diversity in what you pitch and when you pitch it. And the fifth reason is damage. Like Magic and Hearthstone, but damage resets after every clash, which forces the player to have better efficiency and sequencing in their attacks and in their damage. So those are the five things that I think make uh, Alpha Clash a little bit different. Hopefully it gives a little bit more context um, to some of the mechanics that seem like they're similar to other card games when they're really not. Because um, they really took like the best elements of every card game and then approved upon it or made it a little bit deeper. And I think that that's just something that everybody needs to check out, to be honest. So... Definitely check them out. Uh, go to alphaclashtcg.com, which is what you're seeing right here. They have their characters, the gameplay, news and events, all that stuff. You can uh, go to play.alphaclashtcg.com to make a deck builder, play on TTS, see if you like the cards, play with your friends. Um, and, yeah, let me know what you think of it. But hopefully I see you all soon. Uh, if you're new to the channel, feel free to check out my other videos. Uh, let me know what else you would like to see, and I'll see you all next time on TCG Talk. Thank you all so much.